All right, what's going on, guys? It's Epoxy, and we finally got some more details on the Skyrim Anniversary Edition that will hopefully clear up most of the remaining questions or concerns with this new release, as well as a ton of new screenshots and details on newly revealed creations. This is going to be a long one, so as always, there will be timestamps for you to jump around as you please. So, without further ado, let's roll the intro. One of the biggest questions I think most people had about the Anniversary Edition was pricing. How much is the Skyrim Anniversary Edition going to cost for both newcomers and current Special Edition owners? And well, we finally got the answer, and it's actually even a bit cheaper than I had guessed in my previous Skyrim video, as the MSRP for Skyrim Anniversary Edition on digital storefronts at launch will be $49.99 USD. But again, that's standalone cost, as if you already own the Special Edition, you can buy the Anniversary Upgrade, which will cost $19.99 USD. So $30 cheaper. That's actually quite a bit cheaper than I was expecting as I was expecting them to slap us with a full game price this time around and $30 to $40 for the upgrades, but that's not the case. So you can treat this sort of like a massive $20 DLC pack. There will also be physical copies of the Anniversary Edition available for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One systems, but prices and availability for the physical copies may vary. So if you already own the physical copy of Special Edition, I'd suggest that you just get the digital upgrade. Of course, owners of Skyrim Special Edition or the Anniversary Edition on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series will also receive a free next generation upgrade for the game, which will optimize the game with enhanced graphics, faster load times, and more, essentially bringing you closer to the PC experience. And of course, any achievements or trophy progress earned playing on Special Edition will now carry over to the Anniversary Edition, except for when you're upgrading the PlayStation 4 version of the game to the PlayStation 5 version, as that will feature a separate set of trophies. Now, for those of you that have no idea what the Skyrim Special Edition is to begin with, basically it bundles together Skyrim Special Edition with every piece of Creation Club content released at the time of the Anniversary Edition's launch, including additional quests, armor, and gameplay modes. There is a lot of content included and plenty of new details and content has gotten revealed over the last few days that makes this package a little more enticing. So here's all the new creations that recently got revealed that will be released alongside the Anniversary Edition. First off, we've got fishing. Fishing comes to Skyrim. Catch, cook, or keep several new and existing fish. Scattered across Skyrim are new fishing spots signified by a bucket of bait and related accoutrement. They can be found everywhere from lakes and streams to the ocean shores and even deep underground. Many fish prefer a specific type of environment, but there's always something to catch at these spots provided you have a fishing rod with you. Fish long enough and you may even pull up a long lost treasure or long lost boots. All of the new fish can be cooked, which is especially useful if you're playing in survival mode, and fish can also be used as alchemy ingredients with many interesting new combinations to keep alchemists occupied. Alternatively, you can keep your fish by building aquariums at any of the hearthfire homes or mounting them for display. Head down to the Riften docks and you can pick up a variety of jobs around the fishery, Swims in deep water has a lot he can teach you about fishing, and the Red Guard Viria is an excellent source for fishing orders and even some special requests. There are some potent rewards for a skilled angler, from gold to artifacts like the Fang of Hynectomat. Fishing is also one of the four free creations that will be free for everyone starting November 11th with the release of Skyrim Anniversary Edition. So if you own Special Edition, you can snag it for free. And for those of you that don't know, the four free creations consist of fishing, survival mode, saints and seducers, and rare curios. The next creation is the cause. The mythic dawn returns, scavenging pieces to build an open oblivion gate to the realm of their masters, Mayrune's Dagon. Daedric machinations await you, but so do Daedric rewards. In this adventure, you will hunt down the mythic dawn cult, last seen in force in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. They look to reconstruct one of the gates of the Oblivion Crisis, and it is up to you to stop them. Your adventure will take you underground to the ancient alien runes of Riel. Not only is this an opportunity to revisit the classic dungeon, but also to fight its undead inhabitants, the Whites. Fight your way through this dungeon to their moldering leader and learn more of the Mythic Dawn's plans. Additionally, the Alien Rune Dungeon Kit is being added to the base game as a free modder's resource for PC, Xbox, and PlayStation systems, just like the Root Dungeon Kit was added in 2019. This is great news across the board, but this benefits PlayStation the most. The cause is a multi-layered and multi-site adventure. In addition to the new enemies, it also adds new gear to obtain and even a summonable Daedric Horse. 
dig deep and reap the rewards while dashing this nefarious plot. Next is Ghost of the Tribunal. Relics of Morrowind are yours to claim, including powerful artifacts like Hope's Fire and True Flame. Most consider the Tribunal Temple to be a thing of the past. They assume no one would still worship the so-called living gods of Alnalexia, Sothisil, and Vivek after their disappearance. But not all have moved on, and pockets remain following the old ways. In Ghost of the Tribunal, you have the opportunity to assist and rebuild one of these rebel groups, or wipe them out completely. Whichever you choose, this adventure will reward you with new gear inspired by Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. Don the armor of the ancient ordinators, as well as the holy masks of the tribunal themselves. Wield impressive weapons like Mage Bane, the Cleaver of St. Felms, and Skull Crusher. And with this arsenal, face off against the vestige of an ancient foe. Now, those three creations were previously revealed in the trailer, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the sneak peek for 14 plus pieces of newly revealed content coming to Skyrim. Redguard Elite Armaments. Connect with a network of Redguard agents known as the Remnants and help them recover one of their own from the Thalmer. Includes a brand new set of light armor, plus two new weapons such as the legendary Yakudan sword, Bone Shaver, created by Ella and Jose Michaelum Schuburgler. Staves. This creation features seven classic staves from the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. Purchase staves with unique enchantments from Master Nelith, or buy an unenchanted staff and apply one yourself. Items will appear at vendors and in chests. Nichwantham's Dwarven Home. Operate the downstairs manufactory and build automatons to restore this cavernous home to its original luster. Once rebuilt, its spacious halls make it perfect residence for any fan of Dwemer architecture and engineering. Creation by Flennern and Arthmore. Goldbrand. The legendary katana Goldbrand has been wielded by those who have turned the pages of history. Now, this weapon has returned to Skyrim at the resting place of one such hero. Discover the ancient tomb and be the one to write its next chapter. Next up is farming. Build, upgrade, and manage your own farmstead in the heart of Whiterun. Elect a steward to oversee its day-to-day -day operation and purchase upgrades such as animal pens, windmills, apiaries, and stables. Whether it's building a commercial empire, growing crops, or working with animals, there are no shortages of gameplay options here. Created by Virginia Steel Feathers Smith. Bitter Cup. In the forests of Felkreath lies a mysterious altar promising the gift of a single boon. Walk the path that reflects your desire or lack thereof and embark on a unique adventure based on that choice. Discover the fabled Bitter Cup and three separate quests. Quests by Chris Takahashi. Necromantic Grimoire. Rule over the realms of life and death with the Necromantic Arts Pack. This creation features a unique necromancer robe with all new enchantments and variants, plus 13 new necromancy-themed spells, allowing you to conjure a wide variety of skeletons, apparitions, and powerful creatures, including the Mighty Bone Colossus, created by Virginia Steel Feathers Smith, and items can be purchased at vendors and appear in containers. The Contest Behind the din of tavern chatter, two warriors are embroiled in an argument. To settle it, they embark on a quest to see who can slay a monstrous spider. Follow their trail and learn what became of them. Includes the legendary Fists of Randagolf and the Ice Blade of the Monarch, quest by Chris Takahashi. Bow of Shadows Forged by Nocturnal and used by Assassins, it grants the user the gifts of invisibility and speed. Quest by Chris Takahashi. Bloodchill Manor. Perched high in the mountains to the north, this unique player home features several multi-level living quarters, including a dungeon area and bed coffins perfect for wardens of the night. Created by Eleonora, quest by Chris Takahashi. Headman's Cleaver. The Bloodfall Queen has had her cleaver stolen by an old foe. Track the bandits to their hideouts and claim the Headman's Cleaver as your reward. After all, the Queen can replace the weapon. What she desires is revenge. Quest by Chris Takahashi. Fearsome Fists. From iron to dragon plate, this creation offers 15 gauntlet variants that can be crafted, purchased, or found in the world. Each pair has been affixed with spikes, blades, or horns to give impact to your unarmed attacks. Mix and match with existing armors to diversify your look. Created by Hoth Trooper 44. Items appear at vendors, in chests, and can be crafted at any forge. Gallows Hall. Old forts have long been bastions for the dead, as mortals both wicked and misunderstood have hung from their gallows. Here, a necromancer can find a home filling its coffers with treasures that suit the morbid and macabre, provided they survive it. Claim the legendary Bloodworm Helm, Helm of a Rain Bearclaw, and the Staff of Worms to wield the power of Manamarco himself. 
created by Rich Marin, Quest by Chris Takahashi. And lastly, we have an exclusive look at the Alternative Armor series, which wasn't featured in any of the articles and was shared exclusively on the official Bethesda Game Studios Discord server. This series of creations gives Skyrim armors additional styles to add more variety into the game. We got a look at the Alternative Iron Armor, Alternative Orcish Scale Armor, Alternative Orcish Plate Armor, Alternative Daedric Plate Armor, Alternative Leather Armor, Alternative Dwarven Plate Armor, Alternative Silver Armor, and Alternative Dragon Plate Armor, which also includes the Dragonbone Cuirass, a classic Tess artifact. And Skyrim has always had a good amount of armor and clothing, but this takes it to a whole new level, and I actually like these quite a bit. While I do think that some of them look worse than what's already available in Skyrim, some of them definitely have a unique look to them, and I do like that. I'd have to say my favorite is probably the alternative silver armor. But that is all of the newly revealed creations. I have no idea if there will be more than this, but even if there's not, I'd say all of this and all the creations that existed beforehand being bundled in makes it $20 well spent if you're still playing Skyrim, you're new to Skyrim, or you just want some more vanilla styled content to bring you back. If you're on PC and you heavily mod your game, this will likely just make you chuckle, but I still have to appreciate that they're offering all of this for $20, as there is an expansions pack worth of content here. That said, there are some major issues and concerns I have for the Anniversary Edition and their communication with it, especially with these most recent articles. The first thing I want to address is the pricing, which they specifically clarified when revealing it that it was the price at launch. So it could potentially mean that this is just a launch discount for the Anniversary Edition, which I personally always hate when publishers pull that as it's just a way to bait people to buy it at launch. It's not done out of the kindness of their hearts. The second bit is that the Anniversary Edition, according to their own wording, will only include every piece of Creation Club content released at the time of the Anniversary Edition's launch. So all creations beyond this launch will yet again be overpriced and inaccessible for most players. And unless they plan on increasing support for Creation Club and speeding up content drops, it should have just been an all-inclusive copy of the game, at least in my opinion. Of course, it still seems well worth $20 to me personally, as there is a lot of content being added here, but it's just that they're selling yet another copy of the game to you and it's still not giving you everything. They still plan on selling you more. At the bare minimum, they need to start slashing the pricing for Creation Club content when buying it all individually, as right now it would be unreasonable to be able to purchase it all. Now, of course, the most controversial part about the Anniversary Edition is the fact that it's going to break mod support to a certain extent. But I do want to clarify that this issue only affects PC players, and more specifically, Steam owners of the game, as it will only break SKSC64, mods that require it, and other engine plugins which are not available on console and not compatible with the Microsoft Game Pass version on PC. So your console and non-SKSE64 mods should be perfectly safe. The only mods that will break beyond that are those that conflict directly with the new Creation Club content being added. So for example, if they edit the same object or make conflicting changes to locations, things might not work as intended. But those are my issues with the Anniversary Edition content, and the only other complaints I've seen was on the visual quality of creations, but that is explained by the simple fact that Creation Club content just has to match the base game, otherwise it would stick out and not in a good way. It also all has to run well on console. So if you're worried about this new content clashing visually with your graphics mods and that's your really only big complaint, I can pretty much guarantee that there will be mods for that specific issue, as modders have already released plenty of mods for Creation Club content available for both Skyrim and Fallout 4. So I'd say the biggest issue is still SKSE64 mods, which is unfortunately out of Bethesda's control. As this is just Skyrim Special Edition with Creation Club content unlocked, and things would get even more tricky if they had released it as a separate listing on Steam. That would result in a much bigger headache for the modding community in the long run, as that would require another separate version of the script extender, a separate Nexus mod section, which Nexus has confirmed won't be happening because of the way that Bethesda is handling this release. And while this will still result in a setback for the modding community, I think this was the better option in the long run. In a perfect world, they would offer an optional Steam build to revert back to the current version of the game to act as a buffer. But to be honest, most games don't use that feature 
on Steam, and I have no idea how it works on the distribution side of things. That said, it would be nice if they offered the current version of the game as a separate build to install, especially for those mods that have been abandoned and won't be updated for this new version. With all that said, I do have a video showing you how you can prepare your game for the update so that you can continue playing with mods until they've been updated for the latest version. I also do want to note that the specific method that Nexus suggested in their article for downloading old game versions from Steam hasn't worked for over two years, so that method will only download the latest version of the game, no matter which manifest you request from the Steam servers. So do not expect to be able to downgrade your game with that method if you end up accidentally updating your game. I will have a video on how you can still go about downloading old game versions from Steam, but for now, I just wanted to clear up that bit of misguided info in the Nexus article. Of course, as always, I want to know your thoughts on the Anniversary Edition down in the comment section below. I know some of you are itching to discuss this new release of Skyrim. Did this content reveal do anything to sway your opinion on it? I'd love to know. But that's it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please smack that like button down below, subscribe to the Good Fight if you haven't already, and ring that bell icon to stay updated in all of my future videos. It'd be super greatly appreciated as always. And until next time, this is Epoxy, signing off.